Hi, this is Dr. Nikki, and I'm here today to talk to you about the beaded number line. As everyone knows, this is my favorite tool. I love this. If you have nothing else, you need to get this. If you have nothing else, get this. This is going to change your lives. So let's talk about some things that you can do with the beaded number line, specifically in third grade. So the first thing you're going to do in third grade is you're going to go back and review the stuff that they were supposed to have learned in second grade, but that they're still kind of on shaky ground with. So in terms of skip counting, you can use the beaded number line to skip count, and you can skip count by tens, obviously, because it's in groups of ten. So you go 10, 20, 30, etc. But then when you want to skip count by twos and fives, which is what second grade learned, you start by clipping it off and you use these um, clothespins. I use the tiny ones, but they have various sizes and you can use them with the kids. And so either they'll clip off by twos or clip off by fives. Um, in third grade, when you start teaching multiplication, you want kids to be clipping off, you know, by whatever um, the multiples are that they are learning. So that's a good way to go as well. So you can use it for that skip counting and then multiplication. When we talk about place value, um, one of the things is that you get the kids to just, you know, to divide it and so they can see, oh, here is 10, 20, 30, 40. There's four tens and um, four ones. So that would be place value. But then what's really great about this is that the kids can see that there's 10 tens in 100. And so when you're doing like 200 and 300 and you know those questions that the kids always miss on the test when you say how many tens are in 200 and they're like, I don't know, there's zero tens in 200. If you have like a, a lot of double num a lot of beaded number ones, then the kids can see, oh, there's 20 20 tens in 200. There's 30 tens in 300. So I always tell teachers that it's really good to make about 10 of these and have them in your class and string them across in one line so they can see it from, at, you know, all the numbers all the way up to a thousand. And you can do a lot of play, good place value stuff with that. Now, in second grade, they learned to add and subtract numbers to 100, but remember the, flu the fluency was within, within 100, but they're supposed to learn how to add and subtract within 1,000. In third grade, your fluency is 1,000, but they're supposed to learn to add and subtract within 10,000. So this is really one of those tools to shore up those skills that the kids don't have around adding and subtracting to 100 and then you know up to the higher numbers so you're going to look at strategy work right it's not just about traditional method but it's about kids getting kids to think mentally so you do things and all the strategies that we try to get them to do you can really illustrate on the beaded number line so if you say to the kids okay what is 29 plus 33 they can see oh well 29 is almost 30 so i'm going to make this 29 i'm going to go up to 30 and then instead of jumping 33 i'm going to jump 32 right so that compensation is in action and the kids can see it um, so you should do a lot of review of that because then you're just gonna be doing that with you know 329 plus 64 the kids oh, oh I'm gonna go up to 330 and then I'm just gonna add 63 so um, you want to do that the same with subtraction strategies you want kids to see like if you say okay we have 70 and we're gonna take away uh, 49 you want kids to know that they could take away 50 because 49 is really close to 50 but we took away too much so we took away 50 now we're gonna add back one because a lot of times what kids will do is they'll say I don't understand why I'm adding. I'm supposed to be subtracting. Well, you are subtracting, but you just took too much away because it was a friendly number. So that's what you want kids to understand. And we're trying to get them to do all of that mentally, and they really don't have a visual representation for what that means. The beaded number line is it. Before you ever move kids to the open number line, which is the standard, you really want kids to do the beaded number line so that they actually understand what they're doing. Remember the other thing when you're teaching kids subtraction is that the research says that subtraction is much harder it bears out across grades so it's a vertical problem as well as a horizontal problem and so when you're subtracting one of the best things to do is to get kids to add and that's what we do in the grocery store when you go and you say um, what is um, you know 70 take away 48 it's easier for kids to add up to 70 and say, oh, that's the difference than for kids to add back remember adding back or subtracting back is error prone so um, you want kids to know how to do both, but you really should just teach them to add up to subtract. That's what Vanderwall said. He was a godfather of math. So um, those are some of the things that you teach on the beaded number line. But this is going to change your lives right here. Are you ready? What I am about to tell you is going to change your lives. Okay. Rounding. Rounding is hard. The kids can't do it. We teach it in third. They don't get it. We teach it in fourth. They still don't get it. We teach it in fifth. They have no idea what we're doing. This is where it all begins. So in third grade, you teach rounding. You, you say, we're going to round, you know, 54. So we go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And we go to four. We're rounding 54 to the nearest 10. And we can see that 54 
or as close as your 50 than to 60. That's how you teach rounding. It's a visual representation. Now, I used to do all those poems and songs and da 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 don't teach those poems and songs. Teach math, right? It's easier, right? The kid, it sticks with the kids in the long run. Don't teach tricks, teach math. So, and when you do it, when you're teaching rounding and you're just using the place value chart, it's very abstract. So you want kids to feel it, to see it, to know it, to own it, right? And this is starts concretely. You're eventually gonna go pictorially. You're eventually gonna go abstract. But now the kids can refer back to what they know. Oh, we're gonna round 79. Well, where do we round 79 to? 79 is really close to 80. They can see that on the number line. 79 is close to 80. I'm going to round that up, right? So round, you gotta do rounding, right? And, and you gotta do it with the beaded number line. All right, so we've talked a little bit about place value. We've talked about addition, subtraction, multiplication. With division, it's the same thing. You tell the kids, okay, we have 20. We're going to divide it by four so they group back by fours, right? They clip off four at a time to see how many fours we can take out of 20. So it's really good for that. The main thing I use it for in third grade though is to teach those addition and subtraction um, ideas and to really uh, look at rounding. And then the place value, like I said. So there's so many things you can do with this. Um, absolutely use it. Now, the part is, how do you build it? People say, well, can we just get the parents to make them? Well, no, you have to have the kids build them because if the kids build them, then they're gonna understand what it is. But you must maintain your personal sanity at all times, right? We can't lose that, it's too hard to get back. So this is what you're gonna do. You are going to give your kids 10 cups. 10 cups and they put 10 beads in each cup. That's how you build it. You never attempt this whole class and you always take four Advil before you do it, right? You know, you get a small group of kids, you give them some Dixie cups, they put the beads, 10 beads in each Dixie cup, you got 10 cups, and then you have them double check that there's the right amount of beads in it. And then they start stringing. I get the strings, they're called laced shoestrings, um, or I think, I don't know, taped shoestring or something. I get these from Lakeshore. You can use any kind of string, but at Lakeshore they sell these. There's 144 of them for like, I don't know, $10, so you can get more than enough. And then you just have to triple knot it so that the beads don't fall off. You triple knot it on this end, and then you triple knot it on this end. You leave room at the end to move, um, and then the kids build it, right? And, so, and then that's it. So have four kids build it at a time, use those Dixie cups, um, and you know, work with the beaded number line. This is the tool. If I was on a stranded island and they said you have one thing that you could take with you, it would be the beaded number line because you can really do a lot of things with the beaded number line. All right, I'll see you next time. Happy mathing. Mm -hmm.